Welcome, and thank you for being with us on this day of triumph for Gabby Giffords. This is a day of celebration and cheer for Gabby, her husband Mark, her family, and all of us who hold her in our hearts. Just 10 months ago, we held a very different event on campus, a candlelight circle of hope. We gathered on Bowling Green and on Wood Steps. There was an overwhelming outpouring of love and hope for all who were affected by the tragedy. Thank you to all of you who were there, and also to those who sent thoughts, prayers, and notes of encouragement to Gabby this year. Now today, on this beautiful day, we celebrate. Her story, written with her husband Mark Kelly, entitled so appropriately for her life, for their life, and her ongoing recovery, is an inspiration to all of us. Those of you who saw her interview with Diane Sawyer on 2020 last night can attest that she is in great spirits. In the last chapter of their book, written in Gabby's voice, she says it all. I will get stronger. I will return. There is much more for her to accomplish, and we are with her all the way. So today is a time to celebrate her journey to recovery and her words with music and laughter and a chance to talk about Gabby and how much she means to all of us. I'd like to share a letter we received today uh, for all of us to hear Mark Kelly's words to the community. He writes, thank you for gathering at this time to recognize my wife and a proud Scripps alumna, Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. She and I are touched by your continued support. As some of you may know, Gabby graduated from Scripps College in 1993. She received a first class education at the college, majoring in sociology and Latin American history. She used the skills developed while attending Scripps to conduct research in Chihuahua, Mexico as a Fulbright scholar. She continued her education at Cornell University, receiving a master's of regional planning in 1996. Like many of you, Gabby attributes her keen sense of curiosity and her ability to lead to those formative years at Scripps College. Gabby has always been a leader. She returned to Arizona to run her family's tire business at age 26. She then ran for the Arizona House of Representatives and later the Arizona Senate, becoming the youngest woman ever elected to the state Senate. In 2006, Gabby was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, joining the minority of women who have been elected to Congress. It may surprise you to know that women make up only 17% of Congress, a statistic that Gabby has worked to change by encouraging other women to run for office as well. Gabby has always been a focused and determined individual. This year is no different. She continues to slog through a rigorous schedule of speech physical and occupational therapy. She is committed to getting better so that she can return to the job she loves to do, representing the American people in the U.S. House of Representatives. Again, thank you for gathering today to celebrate Gabby and her accomplishments. She is very proud to be a part of the Scripps community and looks forward to seeing you in the future. Sincerely, Mark Kelly. And just a little tidbit, I don't know how many of you watched the 2020 episode last night. If you're planning to watch it, look at the uh, scene where Gabby gives Mark a hug. It's towards the end. She's wearing her Scripps College sweatshirt. <laughs> All right, so now to start the conversation and the, the comments, uh, Kelly Hewitt will come to the podium, and she is class of 2008. One thing that Congresswoman Giffords has done for the Scripps community for many years is invest in the younger Scripps students, the younger Scripps women, and serve as a role model to all of us. She has taken the time to invest in the younger alums. She has offered internships at our office. She's taken the time to sit down individually with students to talk about their goals and how they want to give back to their communities through service. And it's just been such an inspiration to watch how she has done this for us. Um, this is really what makes the Scripps community such a special place and how we're investing in young female scholars and leaders. 
Um, it's been an inspiration as well to watch over the past, past 10 months. I know the campus has been glued to all of the news reports, um, hoping and thinking about her at all times. And um, I just want to second um, all the alums to come forward and say how um, inspiring and how wonderful it has been to watch her miraculous recovery. Um, it definitely, she is a Scripps woman. She's an inspirational leader to all of us. And I think she really represents the best of what we want to be here at Scripps College. Thank you. My name is Claire Bridge, and I'm also an alumna of this institution, class of 1982. I rarely miss a commencement at Scripps, since this day is the highlight of the year for everyone here at the college, students, faculty, and staff. But that day, I attended the graduation as a parent. My daughter, Meggie, is a member of the class of 2009. And while it is always with pride and honor that we welcome commencement speakers of distinction every year, we are especially proud to have one of our own process down Elm Tree Lawn with faculty, administrators, and trustees, and then rise to give the commencement address. Certainly, no one was more thrilled that day than her sister alumnae. It was a privilege to hear her speak this mo that morning, and her opening words conveyed, I think, her own pleasure. And I quote, <clears throat> it is an honor to be, here, be up here talking to you today at the college where I learned so much about life and the world and myself. This place is meaningful for me, not just because of my own history, but for what it continues to do for hundreds of women every year. The exceptional class sitting where I sat 16 years ago, and for all of the women who have come before us and for all of the women who will follow. In blistering heat, the temperatures had already climbed to triple digits when the commencement ceremony began at 10 a.m. Gabby delivered a passionate speech, encouraging the women graduates seated before her to pursue their passion. Everything else, she said, will fall into place. And she continued, what Scripps forced you to grapple with was the appealing back of the human onion in order to discover the supreme value of the soul and how crucial it is to maintain personal integrity and honesty. Part of the process was for Gabby learning, quote, that the group consensus is not always right. In fact, that it can be totally wrong and must be subject to thoughtful ch challenge and questioning. Gabby spoke honestly with conviction, assuring her soon-to-be sister alumni that what Scripps taught her about her life and how to live remains today. She concluded with prophetic words that seem, in retrospect, to somehow foreshadow the challenges that would lie before her. Again, I quote, the safety of the world, in some sense, depends on your saying no to inhumane ideas. Standing up for one's own integrity makes you no friends. It is costly. Yet defiance of the mob in the service of that which is right is one of the highest expressions of courage I know. Looking back on her words now, they ring almost Jeffersonian, and they are timeless. And we are proud to have her as an alumna of the college. For two years, I had the pleasure of being a fellow Scripps College student with Gabrielle Giffords. Like most Scripps women who enjoyed the gifts of a liberal arts education that was embedded in an exquisite residential life program, my paths crossed with pretty much every student at Scripps. Now, mind you, back in 1989, there were only about 600 students enrolled at this beautiful college. And while Gabby and I may not have been personally introduced, it's safe to say that we crossed paths once, or twice, maybe even three or more times. But it wasn't until the spring of 2004 when I was introduced to the gift that is Gabby. By then, I was a staff member at, here at Scripps, as well as an adjunct professor and a new mother. Gabby had returned to our alma mater to accept the 2004 Outstanding Recent Alumna Award. I still remember how packed Balch Auditorium was. Filled with Gabby's 1993 classmates and well as friends from the classes that came before and after her. Gabby had just embarked upon her first campaign to represent the 8th Congressional District in Arizona. She lit up the room. 
She came to the podium with an energy and enthusiasm that was contagious and challenged all members of the Scripps community to find and live their passion. She was, and is, a Scripps woman personified. Today we all reflect on the unbelievable strength and courage that Gabby has shown not only to Scripps, but to the United States and to the world. I can think of few better role models for young women than Congresswoman Giffords, whose record has consistently reflected an ironclad resolve to serve her communities with dignity. Her commencement address to the graduating class of 2009, as Claire mentioned, was a call to action, serving as a reminder to newly minted Scripps graduates to never settle, to never take the easy way out, and to never, ever compromise your beliefs and your values. Gabby Giffords has only begun to take the world by storm. After all, it's the Scripps way. And I cannot wait to see what she has planned next. Thank you.